Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Rick and Morty's Vat of Acid episode taught us that if it comes to throwing yourself in acid or dwelling on countless lifetimes of suffering, acid is the way to go. Episode 8 was my favorite of season 4 so far, maybe because the way it pays homage to my other favorite animated sci-fi comedy, Futurama, but in a very Rick way. And by Rick, I think we always mean evil. Like, we should never ever feel bad for Rick ever again. And I feel kind of stupid for ever feeling bad for him. So let's explain this shit. It opens with Rick forcing Morty into a fake vat of acid to trick some gangsters. They wait it out in the safe liquid and release fake bones to fake their deaths. Dan Harmon said this idea came from the writers joking about how open vats of acid in movies like Tim Burton's Batman is kind of a really weird trope. And past Rick Splain guest Brandon Johnson defended the trope as epic and cinematic, which the writers found to be hilarious. And Brandon Johnson, who plays Golden Fold, made the observation that that's no, just good for production value. Like, as if that's why. Why so many people died in vats of acid in the 80s is because. It was an easy way to kill people cinematically. So like the writers, Morty hates this idea. He thinks it's stupid. He bails on it, and he argues with Rick over the value of their respective ideas. Rick prefers dumb, deadly adventures like Pickle Rick. Morty prefers fantasy escapist adventures like the recent Game of Thrones episode that ended up being all about sex dragons and, yeah, a bit dated. You really got in on that Game of Thrones fever right at the peak. So Rick indulges Morty and gives him a story device that he's always wanted, a time reset button that allows Morty to save save his place, kind of like in a video game, and loop back to it. A device that lets you- Save your place like in a video game, but in real life so that you can try stuff and then go back to your save point. Yes, Morty, I saw it on Futurama. Ah yes, Futurama. He's actually referring to the 2013 final episode of Futurama, season seven, episode 13, an episode titled Meanwhile. Now, if you haven't seen it yet and you want to watch it, but you should, it's a great show. Skip to this time to avoid spoilers. Okay, in the Futurama finale, Fry steals Farnsworth's time button to loop back every 10 seconds so that he can steal diamonds and propose to Leela. He arranges for Leela to meet him at the top of a building to give her answer, but she's late, so he assumes she rejected him and he jumps. But it turns out she's only late because of his dozens of resets delayed his wristwatch. So Fry is forced to reset his fall over and over again until the others can figure out a way to cushion his fall, but he bounces and he breaks the time button, freezing time, trapping Fry and Leela in frozen time for what ends up being a lifetime. They grow old together. It's sweet. And then at the end, decades later, Farnsworth shows up in a time portal and gives them a chance to reset everything, but with no memory of their lives together, and Fry and Leela decide to give it a go. End of series. Now, Rick and Morty is a very different show from Futurama. Futurama was an absurdist comedy with futurist parodies of our current society that typically didn't get too dark, aside from, you know, watching Fry's dog slowly die. God. Oh, God. By comparison, Rick and Morty has way more of a cynical, nihilistic agenda. And so, Rick and Morty's take on a time loop episode explores the darkest implications of that concept. In the episode's second act is a five minute montage that, kind of like the opening montage of Pixar's Up, explores Morty falling in love, struggling in love, and ending in a heartbreaking, deadly scenario. And the writers revealed that this sequence wasn't in the script. It was just a lovely piece of animated storytelling conceived by the director. One of the biggest heroes of it as the director, because the episode was five minutes short, on his own accord, he just did that whole extended plane crash sequence. That wasn't in the script. They said kind of go nuts, and <laughs> I read that book alive in middle school. It may have traumatized me as a kid. Morty makes it through, and things seem great, but Jerry's stupidity causes Morty's sacrifice to be for nothing. And Morty, like Fry, ends up sitting on the time button and dooming himself. And it gets even darker. Rick reveals the whole experience was a cruel trick just to make Morty hate the idea of time resets. Well, if Ant-Man and the Wasp can do it, I'm not interested. It's a weird comment, since Episode 5 of this season broke the ice on time travel, though I did love hearing Rick talk shit about Ant-Man and the Wasp introducing Quantum Realm time vortexes so the Avengers could time travel in Endgame, with this episode's co-writer Jeff Loveness being the guy who will write the script for Ant-Man 3. Anyway, Rick shows that each reset forced the horrible murder of some other alternate universe Morty, much like The Prestige, Chris Nolan's magic movie, in which, spoiler warning for that movie, the transporting man trick requires the murder of a clone. That's 
right, you little bitch. It's the prestige. You prestige Rick, yourself. how many did I you kill? You tell me, Morty. Every time you reset to smell Jessica's hair, every time you relive a satisfying fart, that's how many Mortys you've incinerated, you greedy little junkie. Oh, God. So the only way to fix things is to condense all of these realities so that this Morty has to live with all the horrible consequences of what he's done. Essentially, Rick made Morty like himself, a sadistic monster across endless timelines who has to live with the guilt of his actions. Feel this. Take this in. <laughs> This is God. Like Rick, constantly on the run from the Citadel or the Federation, whoever it is, Morty now has to deal with hordes of haters trying to force him to pay up. And the only way to escape from that miserable existence is... God damn it. Say the vat is good. The vat is good. Kiss the vat. But remember, this vat of acid is fake. It's a cheap, painless escape hatch. It tricks your haters to stop judging you, to feel sympathy for your suicide, temporarily absolving you of your sins, but it requires no real sacrifice or contrition from the sinner. And if you think about it, Rick has already pulled this same trick on us back in season two. That dark ending of the autoerotic assimilation episode in which Rick appears to nearly kill himself. When we saw that, many of us saw Rick in a different light. We thought, oh, maybe he's not an asshole. He's just a Damage, self destructive enigma we have to re examine. Yet we were like those dumb gangsters in the opening scene, spending way too long over analyzing the self destruction, what it means, way longer than Rick anticipated us to. Until, like the writers of the show, he just gives up and says, You know what, screw you, I'm just gonna take shots at you now. So, what's the difference between the time resetting of Rick and Morty and the time resetting of Futurama? Well, this concept is so profound in Futurama that it ends the series on this beautiful, hopeful grace note, but this concept is so mundane in Rick and Morty that it's corrupted into this teaching tool for immortal characters to fake their suicides to trick Supreme Court justices into feeling bad for them. Yeah, two great animated sci-fi series, just one with far less hope for humanity. So what do we think, legit or le shit? I'm gonna discuss the ins and outs of this episode with two buds who overthink it as much as I do. But first, if you're like me, you probably start thinking about what to eat for dinner while you're eating lunch the previous day. I love food. And that's why I love using Postmates. I love Postmates even more right now because I can get food delivered without having to leave the house or even opening the door. They created non-contact deliveries, so now when I order from local restaurants, everything is left right outside my door. They also have Postmates Pickup, which I have been using to order takeout from my favorite local restaurants who definitely need our support now more than ever. Like there's a burrito place around the corner. I'm just really glad that I can give them some business with Postmates. And Postmates doesn't just deliver burgers or sushi. They can also make my life easier in other ways by picking up everything I need from Walgreens or 7-Eleven and dropping it off outside my door. Just download Postmates on iOS or Android, find your favorites, and get everything you want delivered within the hour. And for a limited time, Postmates is giving our viewers and listeners $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. So to start your free deliveries, download the app and use the code RICKSPLAINED. That's code RICKSPLAINED for $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days when you download the Postmates app. Anything you need, anytime you need it, Postmate it. And we are back. Joining me to discuss the Vat of Acid episode of Rick and Morty are my good buds, Rick and Morty superfans, and I think versions of me murdered in alternate timelines so that I can get endless second chances, Tommy Bechtold and Sam Basher. Hey, fellas. How you doing? Hey. Thanks yes. for having me. I am definitely a worse version of you, Eric. I've heard that <laughs> my entire time in Los Angeles. <laughs> and Sam is a better version of me, so I'm like... Baby bear right in the middle. Yes. Um, all right. Well, let's start by breaking down some of the numbers of this episode. Sam was nice enough to go through this episode a few times to quantify each of Morty's resets and giving us the alternate implications for each of those loops just to give us a sense of how big this trauma is that Morty now has to live with. So, Sam, let's break down the numbers. What did you find? All right. So, in total, I got... Uh, Technically, if you count when Rick kills Morty in the beginning, there's 19, but there are 18 total uh, time sets. But after <laughs> that, there are a total of 23 resets that we see on screen and then 29 that I kind of have to count for because like when we see Morty pull a full GTA and start mowing people down in the street, we don't see the yeah. reset, but that happens. Right. Uh, so 23 <laughs> total. And 29 off screen. Also, a bunch of bonuses that we can read off uh, uh, later, which are fantastic that we're able to see on the screens as they go by. Uh, but uh -huh. you want me to run them down? Yeah, let's do it. 
All right, first up, we get Morty in math class, and there is one reset. First, he pulls down Mr. Goldenfold's pants and shows the class his uh, privates, and then he resets so he can start all <laughs> over again. Then we get uh, Morty talking to Jessica first time around. He is really nervous. She walks away, doesn't care about him. Then we get one more reset where he's more confident, and Jessica just uh, can't even control herself. Next, we get three resets where Morty attempts to jump over a manhole cover. <laughs> First, he falls in. Second, he like straddles it. And third, he makes it, but he does get hit by a car, so the death resets. Next, yeah. Morty orders the most boring food at a restaurant of dinner roll <laughs> and then mashed potatoes <laughs> and, re <laughs> and resets for Maine Lobster. <laughs> uh, is it Maine Lobster? I thought he was just ordering two of them. He's like, oh, this oh, isn't dude. enough food. I want two of these dinner rolls. <laughs> That's also pretty good. He seems like that kind of guy. That's just spicy enough for him. <laughs> uh, after that, he does the thing that any 80s or 90s uh, coming of age story uh, trope. It's uh, him trying to go into the uh, locker room, the women's locker yeah. room. He sets it. He walks in and gets chased out. And then he resets so that he never did it. Good call. Don't do that. That's gross. Uh, <laughs> next is my favorite petty one is where he tries to beat a boss in a video game and resets so that he can have a perfect <laughs> game. <laughs> Following that, Morty tries to sample different ice creams. And the ones I wrote down were there was a green flavor, which was either pistachio or a apple mango based on the menu. Then chocolate, which could have been Robbie Road, which was funny. Yeah. Vanilla or butter butterscotch. Then Brennermint. Or peppermint because I don't know what that, I don't I don't understand the joke and then coffee so we get four on there next we get suicide by cop <laughs> Morty, yeah. Morty attempting to throw a paper ball into the trash and he misses and resets uh, Morty steals a car and he plays out GTA with his heroin buddy and he runs down uh, pedestrians who are texting while they're walking across the street then we get uh, Morty stealing a wheelchair from an old man uh, knocking him into the street and coming back so that he can actually help him and be a good person next. I initially wrote down Alien Orgy slash Cantina Band, <laughs> but then yeah, I went back and it's like, was no, this? no, it's definitely an orgy. There's someone wearing like a mask. There's like, I don't, it looks like one big being. I couldn't tell yeah, what I was like. I think at. it's deliberately meant to be confusing what exactly is going on there, but I love it because there's just like a little, little pieces of kink. That are all over that. One, some, some for everybody. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, then we get uh, Morty attempting to toss a cheese puff into his mouth. He hits his lower lip, then his eye, then he fully misses. So eventually, I think he got it. I don't know how many. That was at least three that we saw <laughs> on screen. <laughs> then he attempts the high dive and gets laughed off for not uh, actually jumping into the pool, which I thought we'd get a really cool scene where he jumped in with the remote and it messed up time. But no, nope, that's not the point of this no, episode. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we get the most important one where he resets to go into the strip club, but ha meets the love of his life. Uh, <laughs> and it accidentally gets reset by Jerry. So it's kind of tough to call this one because it's not Morty's fault. But following that is when he gets maced twice in the face uh, or three times, excuse me. And there's two resets in there. Um, or, uh, and then after that, he trips and falls on it. And he uh, ends up resetting when she walks away from, which is three. And then to cap it off, he resets three times to be murdered by gorillas over and over <laughs> and over again. And I'm counting maybe one more just because the last shot we see of him is jumping into the pit and being ripped apart again. And then it right. cuts away. Uh, and yeah. for bonuses, you got to throw it in there. They're on the screens as they go by. I'm sure you mentioned it, but Morty's drinking some sort of beaker of something. And you see him melt for the mm -hmm. deleted timeline, as well as him and Rick ship for some reason. Him, <laughs> the best, my favorite is he's in a, on the, the driveway and he has a basketball next to him. And he's melted on the ground, which means that he kept missing a three pointer. And he just, yes. <laughs> and lastly, they say that he, uh, even the, uh, even the other times they mention without mentioning what it is and it's clearly like must have been like masturbating or something like that he he relived that over and over again uh which is just um it was it fits for morty but wow he uh he learned a valuable lesson in this episode and sam you pointed out something interesting here not only did he die of course doing the mundane tricks of like trying to fit a ball into a hole like the guy was also like had other suicides we didn't see. He drinks that potion, which either means he's just like trying it, like he's trying Rick's like mystery uh, concoction, or like there was another example of a different way he tried to kill himself, which like to me just reminds me of the the Groundhog Day thing, right? Like there's a suicide montage which resets the loop, but like it's implied that there were endless different incarnations of this, which is super dark. 
Oh yeah, I wouldn't mind a, like a darker like YouTube uh, like animated short where you see all the other timelines of the Groundhog Day movie, where you see all the other outcomes of whatever happened to that version of him, <laughs> yeah. which is just awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Groundhog Day is that crazy scene where it's just like uh, uh, Chris Elliott and and um, what's not Julia Louis Dreyfus, who's the other one, Andy McDowell, Andy McDowell. Uh, uh, and they see his corpse, and it's the one moment that's outside of Bill Murray's perspective from that movie. So it's implied that like there were endless timelines where things moved on without him, which is oh, super God. messed up. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're getting sidetracked on Groundhog Day just because yes. we love it. Um, I want to ask you guys, my takeaway is that this vat of acid is like a metaphor for the way the show uses Rick's suicidal tendencies to trick us into feeling bad for him. Do you guys think that Rick deserves any of our sympathy? No, I think, I, think, I think he's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant mirror to hypocrisy in our both our online culture and our social media and our, even our day to day socializing. Like at the end when that woman gives the impassioned speech about like he deserved consequences, but perhaps we're to blame a little bit as well for making a boy jump into a vat of acid. Like the boy right. jumping yeah. into the vat of acid is all of the people that just get absolutely destroyed on Twitter for whether deservedly or not. And like, you know, <laughs> there's so many examples. The woman who tweeted that awful thing about getting AIDS in Africa and then came oh, like, yeah. on a flight and then lost Wi-Fi, landed, had lost her job, had been retweeted 150,000 times. Like, that was an absolutely disgusting thing for her to tweet. Did her life need to be completely destroyed permanently for it? No. And I think like, yeah. you know, ultimately we come around, but it's like the, the immediate uh, nature of like punishment has become like, we've really become a mob rule, mob justice punishment system on, on Twitter, especially. So I think Rick doesn't deserve sympathy. I think he deserves a pause and, and understanding that like he is the profane, grotesque version of like, what is a good point? Interesting. What do you think, Sam? No, I love the uh, behind the scenes video because it's really cool when you because they put them out on YouTube. But also, if you get the season pass on iTunes, those just immediately get uploaded as soon as the episode's mm. out there. So I, I, I did like the point. <laughs> I did like how they talked about the lesson of, of, of this episode that maybe sometimes he's a kid. <laughs> like he maybe he deserve maybe Morty or other younger people that might not know or were you know or make mistakes maybe they should be let off the hook but that's clearly not what rick's doing rick's just trying to be petty rick's (laughs) being rick and uh yeah i have no i have no sympathy for him but it does it uh, you guys bring up a great point like reevaluating all the times that you you're meant to feel bad for rick where either Mm -hmm. he feels lonely in the universe or he doesn't feel loved or you find like the facade like cracks for a second and you think you're (laughs) seeing past it you're like actually maybe you're not (laughs) maybe you're not maybe Maybe this is just this is him like contemplating the whole like do over scenario. Yeah. And for all we know, he's left universes millions of times. Yeah. We have no idea. He might just do this without building a special device that resets it and kills alternate versions of himself. Yes. He might just literally be making the conscious decision of yeah. uh, of abandoning his own mistakes right. and moving yeah. on from them. So it makes it. It makes it a lot more complicated, and it, it, it actually, this episode made me think about like that we haven't had like a super deep episode yet. This felt like it with the whole interlude with him with his romantic partner, and I feel so bad that we don't get she doesn't even get to talk to him at the end of the episode. <laughs> no. um, but and so like that's the closest we've gotten. It feels like this season to getting to like a deeper moment to like mm-hmm. see behind the the comedy and the sci fi gobbledygook. So. Yeah. I, I don't know. I really hope we had to confront that again because we thought that like Rick was this like sci-fi intergalactic war veteran <laughs> that's like mm-hmm. fighting for freedom or whatever. And it's like maybe not. Maybe yeah. he's yeah. not doing any he, of that. He might just be yeah. the devil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he really might. And like yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it, which I usually do. But like to me, the level of pettiness and commitment Rick has just to prove his point and get mm-hmm. revenge on Morty. Feels like Eric Cartman's Scott Turnerman Must Die yes. episode. Like yes. the way he, the way he like relishes in Morty uh, at the end, having to come to his side. Like yes, kiss, kiss the vet. <laughs> that feels like Cartman being like, "Ooh, your tears taste yeah. so delicious." You know, that's that's this is his in some ways Rick's darkest moment. Uh, not just for like the death he's caused, but just for like the, the pettiness of this point. It's mm. it's pretty dark. 
uh, one thing that interests me about this episode, among any things, is one of my favorite episodes, was the fact that, like, Rick's whole moral stance is that he's anti-time travel. But, like, we just saw three episodes ago, episode five, they did a whole Terminator-style episode. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think is going on here? Do you think this season was released out of order and that originally that was going to be later? They thought it was all going to be in the first half of the year? Uh, mm -hmm. Or do you think that was an exception for a specific reason? Like, snakes can do time travel, but Rick doesn't do time travel. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't think they care. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like yeah. Justin and Dan are, would be more like... The chaos, like the fact that people would be confused or question if the season was aired out of order would be a badge of honor for them. <laughs> they would be like, yeah. oh, did you, are you having trouble following timelines? That's why time travel is a stupid idea. <laughs> like, I, uh, <laughs> I think, uh, I don't, I don't know. I mean, obviously, you know, especially with how chaotic the, the business side of it or the reality is with how chaotic the world is right now, especially with production, like. The, the, things may have been screwed up. They might have even been saving some of these episodes for later and they realized they just had to put them out. Like, we need content yeah. right now and there's nothing new being made, really. Except for these great shows on New Rockstar every week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It feels more like... Uh, it, 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 I like the mechanics that they've set up in previous episodes. Like, this is like a throwback to season two, episode one, right? That's when time breaks after they right. reset yeah, after the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, that, that's when they brought up the, like... He brought, mentioned time crystals, and he opened up like the whole like timeline of the alternate uh, alternate universes or timelines that Morty's able to like kill and then uh, like snap over to. Um, it feels more like uh, they're using the rules that they've set up to tell a time based story without it being time travel. So it still sure. feels like it's within like the the timetable of the season. Like it feels like everything's in order the way it's supposed to be. And I, I did like it. Also, I like to dig at Ant-Man and the Wasp. Like if they can do it, <laughs> yes. then, we're, then, it, then it's not worth doing. So we're going <laughs> to go. Yeah. Really can, can we just point out the fact that like, there wasn't technically time travel in Ant-Man and the Wasp. It was Avengers Endgame. Right. But like, they're so subtle enough, scalpel style with their dig that they know that it was the post credit scene of yeah. Ant-Man and the Wasp that technically introduced time yeah. vortexes and the MCU just with a throwaway line from Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> That's the movie that gets the heat, <laughs> not <laughs> Avengers Endgame. <laughs> <laughs> Which it was probably also, yeah, you know, the, the co-writer of the episodes writing Ant-Man 3. Rick, you know, Dan Harmon loves, like, throwing shade at Marvel whenever he can because mm -hmm. it's popular. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to ask you guys, uh, because this is, like, the central premise of this episode, what inspired the, uh, the writers to write it. Uh, it wasn't, like, the time resetting. It was just the weirdness of a vat of acid that is uncovered <laughs> and how that's a trope, like, in DC Comics, of course, with the Joker's origin. But, like... Also in movies, like, why do we think that's such a trope? Like, why can't people cover their vats of acid in fictional <laughs> worlds? Because <laughs> it looks so cool. It looks so, <laughs> like, it's like it's such a visual thing. Like, a bubbling vat of green goo is just such an appealing visual in an action movie. I fully I agree. Know. Also, like, we we finally, like, I feel like this like the past five years, we finally moved out of like the floam and the slime and the silly putty mm -hmm. phase where like mm -hmm. green, sticky, gross fluids, the sliming on like Nickelodeon, we finally like yeah. started to to like scoot away from that like a little bit. And I'm glad yeah. because I don't understand why we got so enamored by all that, like the green ooze and TMNT That's or like, right. like I, I don't, under, I, but, I mean, I who do, what kid doesn't like a sliming on Nickelodeon? But like, I don't... <laughs> Listen, sl slime John Cena all you want, but, you know, like there are, <laughs> there are other options. It doesn't just have to be Snoop Dogg and John Cena crip walking on the Kids' Choice Awards getting slime all over them. There's other, there's other ways to humiliate an adult for cash, right? Like, I get humiliated for cash all the time. And there's rarely ever green goo. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, we anyway. should point out that, like, the... The slime or the vat of acid doesn't technically kill the Red Hood or, or the Joker in the, in the Tim Burton movie. It just deforms him. But it, it is an interesting point that, like, it is so impractical to have, you know, these huge drums of uncovered liquid that, like, <laughs> I love there's rats running all around this factory. For sure rat bones would be floating yes. around in that constantly. Yes. It's so unsanitary whatever you want to use that acid for. It doesn't make any sense. But I, I do love it. And I think uh, ever since... Uh, Breaking Bad, we have not had a truly good dissolving human flesh uh, plotline 
that uh, I think that needs to be a trope. I think our, our world needs it. Agreed. <laughs> also, that they, they instantly turn to bones. I love that it's like it's instantaneous that they jump in or, there. Or five seconds. That five was five seconds, seconds of horrible <laughs> suffering, boss. <laughs> all all of them's gone. All of it. <laughs> clean, clean, gorgeous uh, bones. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right well that has been this week's episode of Rick Explain. big thanks both to Sam Basher and Tommy Bechtold for joining me this week especially to Sam for breaking down those numbers for us yeah, it's great to get a sense of the gravity of what Morty has to live with now so awesome. funny um, a reminder to all of you that you can get early audio versions of the show just by subscribing to Rick Explained wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow me on social media. You can follow New Rock Stars. Subscribe to this channel for more Rick and Morty breakdowns. Our breakdown of all the hidden animation details and the jokes, the Easter eggs that you missed this episode is coming next on the channel. There were some great like shout outs to The Simpsons and South Park if you're looking closely. Uh, and we will close out this week with our favorite joke from the episode. I'm acid proof. F all of you. F all of you. Feels like that guy had other stuff going on.